recording. Dang it. Sorry about that. Now it's recording. Um, so we can see that at all the diagonals, this right here equals zero if I add them together, negative one and one. So therefore it has to be this one right here, B. Uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, right here. Um, the next one. So by elimination, we should see that this one should be C, but we can go ahead and show it just to prove it, that the pattern right here is this horizontal at this right here. When the height, when Y equals zero, it's this one. And hopefully you guys can see this would be the solution because as my height gets bigger, the height of one, height of two, the slope is also increasing. And similarly, if the height is negative one, height is negative two, negative three, negative four, the slope becomes more negative. So finding those patterns, guys, really helps to eliminate, especially these that are multiple choice. Um, I know that's more, probably won't be the case in the free response, but um, it's still something we, we still need to know in case you do uh, continue to pursue STEM in the university. So there's something, little tricks that can help you out. Uh, let's go ahead and continue with today's lesson. Um, and what we're going to be doing today is we're working with differential equations, but separating the variables. Um, this is just the introduction to the second part, but uh, it's still good to understand since it might struggle us, may, make us struggle, but it's called separation of variables. So these are the steps that I found. Um, they're not that bad. Just pretty much put X's on one side, Y's on the other. Um, you integrate with respect to the variables. Most of the cases, it's with respect to x, right? Because we usually work with dy dx, where our variable is this x right here. Um, and don't forget that we're going to integrate, so always add a plus c, and then we solve for y. So I'll give you a couple seconds in case you need to write that down. Alrighty, the same information will be on the next slide, just in case you haven't finished writing it down, and those scribbles will be on the PowerPoint. Okay, um, so what does it mean by separating variables? Pretty much as it sounds, guys. Um, uh, here are the same steps in case you didn't finish copying them down. And this is my first example. So pretty much when we're gonna solve for these, um, we don't have an initial condition, so these will be uh, general cases. So. The first thing, guys, uh, I don't know how you will see this on the exam. It's either going to be y prime or f prime of x or d, d y, dx. Hopefully, by now, we know that that's all the same thing. Um, I like to change it to d, y, dx is equal to whatever they gave me, 2x over y. Um, so now we can go ahead and begin. So the first step says to separate the variables. Pretty much bring all the x's to one side, all the y's to another side. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, this dx is in the denominator, so to move it to the other side and multiply by dx, dx. So I got the following. I got dy is equal to, uh, where is this, 2x dx. And I can go ahead and move that y all the way around. So multiply by y, right? Because I want to get rid of this y and this y, and multiply by y. So this gives me the y on this side. So this is the equation that I have so far. Any questions, concerns? All right, that throws us to our next step is to integrate with respect to the variable that's given. Um, to, I can't emphasize this enough. This is dy dx. So the variable has to be with respect to x, right? So all we're going to do is integrate both sides. So integrate, integrate. And hopefully we remember that when we integrate, um, the integral 
and the dy dx, the integral, and the dx are inverses, right? They undo each other. So we'll just go ahead and continue. So if I was to integrate, oops, let me get my mark. If I was to integrate y, that's the same thing as saying y squared divided by two, right? Okay, uh, and since we're integrating with respect to x, um, the c does not go on my y, it goes to my x's, right? Um, if I wanna integrate two x, that's the same thing as saying x squared plus c. Any questions on that so far? This is integration rules. I'm pretty much using uh, the power rule and plus one divided by my new n, yes? Yes, no? Okay, so I already integrated and I added my plus c. My c was only to my variable that we are including, the x's. So that's why the plus c is happening right here. Okay, uh, last but not least, guys, is just solve for, solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for y. So notice how it's being multiplied by 2. I'm sorry, divided by 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2. Everything here gets multiplied by 2. So I got y squared equals 2x squared plus 2c. Now keep in mind that the 2c is still a constant. So you can go ahead and get rid of this and write it as a, just a plus c. It doesn't matter because it's still a constant. We don't know what that constant is. So just leave it as a c. Uh, last but not least, we can go ahead and solve for y. It's being squared, so square rooted, square rooted. So I got y equals the square root of 2x squared plus c. And don't forget, you always get two options here, the plus and the minus, whenever you do square root. Our answer is this one right here. This right here would be our answer. Any questions so far? Wait a couple of seconds before I move on. Alrighty, can I move on? So far so good. Okay. Uh, my my answers were screenshotted in the notes in case you needed them. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try the next one. Uh, we got x squared plus three y dy dx equals zero. So pretty much uh, separate the variables. So move all the x's to one side, all the y's to the other side. So that shouldn't be that bad. This is 3y dy dx is equal to, well, this is, I'm gonna move it to the other side. So this is negative x squared. Um, so far so good, but I do notice that I have a dx in the denominator. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by dx on both sides, right? dx on both sides. So this dx, this dx, Eliminates right because uh, what's in the number and what's in the denominator, and I'm left with 3y dy is equal to negative x squared dx. From here, I can go ahead and integrate. I'm gonna go ahead and integrate this real quick 3dy. This is the same thing as saying my y squared over 2. And the three, I just attach it to it. If you want to check your work, well, you just have to derive this. And you can see that when you derive the two and the power rule, the two and the denominator, to go ahead and eliminate because there's two over two. Are we okay with that? Yes, no. Um, so they were on this step right here. Okay, uh, the next part, we're going to go ahead and integrate the other hand, the right hand side. So the negative just stays. So it's negative. 
according to this, I add a one to my exponent and I divide by the new exponent, so that would be three. So this should be negative x cubed over three. And don't forget that you're adding a c because we're working with uh, the x variable, the, the, with, with respect to the x variable. Any questions so far? Okay. The next part says we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and go do this by step. So that denominator 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. So that means everything on the right-hand side gets multiplied by 2. So we've got 3y squared equals distribute the 2. So negative 2x cubed over 3 plus c. Because anything times this c is still c. So c divided by 2, I don't care what it is, is still equal to c. So that's why I left it as c. Okay, uh, last but not least, um, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this three, divide by three. So this right here, division of three is the same thing as multiplying in the denominator. So I got y to the ninth. So it's gonna be y squared, sorry, is equal to negative two. This three and this three become nine x cubed. And doesn't matter to the c because it's still a constant. I got this so far. Last but not least, this y is squared, so I'm going to go ahead and square root it. So my answer should be y equals plus minus the square root of negative 2, 9, x cubed plus c. That's our solution. So pretty much in summary, um, you integrate with respect to x and you solve with respect to the y. So they might change, um, I guess, ds, dt, like for precision and time, integrate both sides with respect to t, and solve for s. So it doesn't really matter what they ask you. Okay, so I'll wait a little longer and then I'll continue. And we'll go into our trig, which is super fun. Uh, feel free to stop me or ask questions, guys, whether it's on mute or... Yes, the C remains the same because um, it is a constant. So no, we don't know what the constant is until like Wednesday, but um, C times whatever number will still be C or division. Sorry about that. Division by a number will still be C because we don't know what that constant is. For all we know, it could be one or seven or negative 13, something like that. But we don't know that yet. So no matter what we do, multiply, add, subtract, it'll still be C, it'll still be another number. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's go with our trick. Uh, okay, so these right here, they look scary, I know, but they're not that bad. Um, so pretty much we're going to do the same thing, uh, separate the variables. So this right here, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by cosine y, cosine y. So I should have cosine y dy is equal to 4x cubed dx. Yeah. Uh, because I did the same thing for my... Um, x's so I multiply by dx right here to get rid of these and dx so all we have to do now guys is just integrate so if I go ahead and integrate the left hand side on the right hand side so the integral of cosine well we need to think about what derivative gives me cosine so you could do your little trick and say this is cosine y so it came from this right here, the sine, so sine y. Do we need to add a c? Well, not really, because um, uh, we're with respect to x. Even if you did, you remove the c's all to the same side, and it'll still become c. Um, it's equal to, let's integrate this 4x cubed. Um, so you pretty much do the same thing. You add a 1 to the exponent, that becomes a 4, and divide by that exponent. So it'll be 
x to the fourth and the four over four equals to one. Don't forget to see. Okay. Um, the, here's where your pre-cal knowledge comes back. How do I get rid of this sign right here? If it's inside, if it's um, fun, um, on y. So remember, we can't divide by sine. You have to do the inverse of sine, which is arc sine. Yep, good job, yeah. So it's gonna be um, arc, oops, arc sine of the original sine of y. And what you do on one side, guys, you have to do to the other. So arc sine of x to the fourth plus c. So arc sine and sine are inverses. So y equals arc sine of x to the fourth plus c as our solution. Um, in the homework, guys, I did include one of these right here. So a fun fact, you got to know how to integrate the right arc sign, but they're not that bad. They're just a little different. Okay. Uh, any questions? I only have one more example, guys. Which is pretty much, it's just solving for, it, it should be like integration, nothing, nothing that bad. Just integrating both sides. <clears throat> Give you a couple of seconds in case you need to write that down. Alrighty, my last one. Um, it's not that bad, but it does include include uh, use substitution. So I really like this one. So the first thing I like to do is I notice this y prime, the same thing as saying dy dx. So I got sine x equals cosine x, whoops. So now we can go in and separate the variables. I'm gonna go ahead and get this dx to the other side by multiplying by dx, multiplying by dx. And then the left-hand side, they go ahead and equal to one. Okay, so I got sine of x dy equals cosine of x dx. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to go ahead and integrate to get rid of that dy's and the dx's. So integrate, integrate. So the integral of sine, well, that would give me, according to our little, if this is sine, this probably came from a negative cosine, right? So it's negative cosine x. I'm sorry, what am I doing, guys? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, sorry about that, guys. What is this here? This is an X. So that means these should have went here as well. Rip. Is it, someone say it on the typo? Typos. Yes, sorry, Ian, sorry, Angel. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry, guys. This should have been on the left-hand side. Where's my eraser? Sorry. No fear. Hopefully, you're not writing in pen. Um, so pretty much what happened is this sign of X should have went to the other side also. Sorry about that. Okay, so let me go ahead and just stay here. Um, so up to here, it's perfectly fine, right? So I just rewrote it. Rip. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's not that bad, guys. I was like, why is it more difficult than it should be? Um, so this is still the same. Um, this sine of x, how to get rid of sine of x, divided by sine of x, divided by sine of x. So this right here, so I got dy dx is equal to cosine x sine of x. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and move this dx, right? This dx, so I'm going to multiply by dx. Oh, that's a hard homework. This dx 
because we're multiplying by dx. So all I have is dy is equal to this cosine x sine of x dx. Now I know a lot of you say cosine x and sine of x. Oh, that's cotangent. I, I agree with you 100%. But remember, we still have to integrate um, cotangent. And honestly, there's not a nice shortcut for the cotangent. So I'm going to leave it as, I'm going to leave it just like this, cosine over sine. So now we can integrate, and now it's going to be a lot simpler. So integrate, integrate. Hold up, wait a minute. We got nothing in front of the dy. That must mean it's a 1, right? So if I integrate 1, that's just y is equal to. This part right here is where I was talking about. Um, so it looks difficult. I know a lot of us want to do this. Uh, keep in mind, that will make it a little tougher. But I want you to think about this, and I want you to think about use substitution. So yeah, there will be uh, use substitution in the homework, uh, but not crazy stuff. Just you know, get rid of constants and stuff. Um, this right here. So I want you to look into this and find out, hey, um, which derivative is still in here? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think on your own, and then I'll do it myself. Okay, so hopefully you decided that your u is dun, 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 sine of x. Mm -hmm. So if your u is sine of x, guys, I pick this. Um, oops, I picked u to be here. This would be my u. Because when I derive it, it gave me cosine of x. So according to my u sub, I can rewrite the entire integral to be 1 over u du, right? Because this dx got attached to my derivative. So I have all of this. So I'm saying this is this. Now, dilemma. What is 1 over u? How do I integrate 1 over u? So I'll give you a couple seconds to remember that. But hopefully you still remember that when you, derive, when you integrate 1 over u. Yep. Awesome, this should be the ln. So when you integrate one over you, this should be ln, oops. Ln, absolute value of u plus c. And we know what u is, so we can substitute it back in there. We know what u is, so we just go ahead and put that back in here. So according to this should be ln, absolute value of sine of x plus c. This goes right here. So our answer should be y equals ln sine of x plus c as our solution. Okay. So a big takeaway from here, guys, um, is this right here. Let me get a highlighter. Um, chain, um, sorry, not chain rule. Uh, use substitution, the use and the de-use. Uh, and this right here, I know a lot of us struggle with this, uh, but remember this is just the integral of ln's. And this right here, this one right here, when there's nothing, it's just dy. Remember, it's just one. So you integrate one and it's just y. Well, we're just a variable. Um, any questions so far? This was my last example, so feel free to ask it in the chat or uh, in the mic if you unmute yourself. It's up to you guys. Other than that, you are good to go. Cool. I agree. Pretty cool. So the use up makes it longer. Uh, yeah, use up makes it a little tougher, but uh, keep in mind, I'm trying to review as we're doing this. So I decided to throw some use substitution just to bring back those memories. Hopefully they're good memories, right? <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Take <laughs> <laughs> lunch just to go to Pacinas and then use some. I'm sorry, I can't hear Jocelyn or. But you can't hear? I, I couldn't hear. I'm sorry, what was the question? Hold on, hold on. 
it wasn't a question. Oh, sorry. I just said, oh yeah, they're super good memories. <laughs> memories about lunch. <laughs> yeah. Um, so pretty much these will be the homework questions, guys. Uh, once again, they're multiple choice because I'm struggling to keep up with the grading, but I'm getting better at that. Um, but they're not that bad. Uh, there is uh, when you integrate one over y, or um, those will give you the ln's, right? Um, and stuff like that. But they're not impossible stuff. Worst case scenario, guys, you can ask me for help. I, I don't mind. I'm usually attached to either my phone or my laptop, and I'll be able to help you. And take me a couple seconds to reach to you, but I'll get you an answer somehow. Um, uh, keep in mind, guys. Uh, on Friday, we have holidays, so fun fact, um, there's no school on Friday for us. Um, so, um, however, if you do have questions, I'll, you can reach out to me and I'll help you out with any homework questions you have or whatever the case may be. Up and... Let me read this chat. Oh, hello, Gabby. <laughs> yes, three day weekend. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.